What is up everyone, it is Sacred Saiyan here, welcoming you back to another video. Today, we're going to be starting a new series on the channel, What If Goku Remembered the Saiyans. If you end up liking today's video, then please consider subscribing. It is free, and you can always unsubscribe later. Also, if you want to join my Discord server, then there is a link to that in the description of the video. You can talk to me and my community, grind for old, hang out, and if you put your art on the Artex channel, and 10 people react to the star, it'll get featured at the end of the video. Also, if you want to support me and the channel, then you can become a channel member. There's a link in the description of the video to become one. There are multiple tiers, and each of them give you more and more perks. If you guys enjoy this part, and want to see another part of this series, then get this video to 500 likes. And with all of that out of the way, let's get into the first episode of What If Goku Remembered the Saiyan? Deep in the far reaches of space, there was once a planet, home to the mighty warrior race known as Saiyans. This planet was known as Planet Vegeta, and this was where the Saiyan baby Kakarot was born, as the son of the low-class Saiyans Bardock and Gine. One day, Freezer requests all the Saiyans to return to Planet Vegeta, and Bardock realises Freezer's plan. Freezer wants to bring all the Saiyans to one location, in order to wipe out their entire race in one foul sweep. Gine isn't so sure that Bardock is right, but she doesn't want to risk her child's safety. So when Bardock proposes they send Kakarot to a planet called Earth so he is safe, she agrees with the idea. If Bardock is wrong, then they can just go and get him later. So Bardock and Gine send their son Kakarot to Earth, and after his space pod crashes into the planet, he is raised by an old man called Son Gohan. The elderly man realises how rowdy the child is, but more importantly, he realises the latent potential and power of the child who came from the stars. And now, it's where the big change happens in this timeline. Goku never hits his head, resulting in Goku keeping his few memories of his past. Over time and training with Son Gohan, Goku does eventually get a calmer mind. However, every night, Gohan sees as a boy looks up to the stars, and he always sees a boy outstretch his hand, almost imitating the position he was in when he was sent away from his home. One fateful night, Goku continues his routine of looking at the stars, However, on this night, there is a full moon. Goku's eyes go blank as his father's voice plays in his mind, telling Goku not to look at the full moon, because if he does, he will transform into a raging Muzaru. Son Gohan is inside his home, making some tea, and he hears a roar coming from outside. Gohan runs outside, believing Goku is being attacked by a dinosaur. However, he looks in shock as he sees a giant ape in front of his home. Gohan quickly deduces this is Goku, because of Goku's tail and alien origin. Gohan doesn't want to hurt his adopted grandson, so he mostly avoids Yuzara's attacks, only attacking the ape when it is necessary for his survival. And out of sheer luck and willpower, Gohan survives the night, and the next morning, Goku wakes up. And scared for his grandfather's life, Goku frantically looks around his home, and he finds an exhausted Gohan sipping on a cup of tea. Goku hugs Grandpa Gohan, saying he can't lose anyone else. Gohan hugs a small child back, Surprised that the child knew what happened, whether he chuckles, saying he can't get rid of him that easily. We now skip some time. Goku is just walking around, daydreaming, when he hears a blue haired girl screaming for him to get out of the way. Goku then stops daydreaming as he is about to get hit by a car, and he puts his hands in front of him and he lifts the car above his head. The blue haired girl then shouts for Goku to put her down. Goku doing this, and then Bulma exits the car composing herself as she introduces herself as Bulma. Goku not knowing if he should introduce himself as a Saiyan or Earthling name, but he decides it is best for Bulma to call him Goku. Bulma would then ask Goku if he knows where Dragon Ball is. Her radar says there's one close by, so maybe he knows where it is. Not knowing what a Dragon Ball is, but he says Bulma can come with him and they can ask his grandpa Gohan if he knows about it. Bulma agrees, so Goku leads Bulma to his home, then knocking on the door as Gohan opens it. Grandpa Gohan introduces himself, and then Bulma asks if the old man knows what a Dragon Ball is. If so, does he know where to find one? Grandpa Gohan smiles, telling Bulma to wait there as he goes inside, and he comes back out holding the 4 star Dragon Ball. He found this a long time ago in his travels, but he feels like Bulma would have more use for it than him, so he gives her the ball. Bulma is surprised he just handed over the ball, and asks if Grandpa Gohan actually knows what they do. They can grant any wish. Goku perks up, asking Bulma if that is really true. Bulma says it is just a rumour, 
But she knows in her gut that it is true. Goku looks back to Grandpa Goha. Goha knowing what Goku is thinking, and he continues to smile as he nods. Goku then looks back to Bulma, asking if he can come with her to gather the Dragon Balls. Bulma asking why, and Goku tells Bulma who he really is, and why he wants a wish. Bulma doesn't believe him at first, however when thinking about it, the boy does have a tail, which is quite strange, and Gohan does confirm his story, so even though Bulma does have some doubts in her mind, she does believe Goku, and since his wish seems way more important than hers, she agrees to Goku coming along with her. Goku getting excited, as him and Bulma go on their adventure to gather the Dragon Balls. The only major difference being that Goku is a bit stronger, since he had more training with Grandpa Gohan, and he's also smarter and more motivated, because he never hit his head. So this would mean, Oolong still interrupts the peel of Gang's wish, and Goku is disappointed in himself, as he looks up into the stars once again. He was going to ask the dragon if his parents were still alive, and if so, then why did they never come back for him? But unfortunately, he couldn't get that wish. Bomber comforts Goku, telling him that it is okay. In a year, they will be able to make another wish. Goku is somewhat comforted by this notion, but he still wishes he didn't have to wait another year. And he is certainly less optimistic about getting the wish the next time, as something could happen which prevents him from getting the wish again. But for now, Goku and Bulma go their separate ways, and this is where we're going to end off this part. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, then make sure to like, comment, and please do subscribe. It is quick and easy to do. Also, I want to give a huge thank you to Neo Whitcomb, Goku Todd, and Frederick Frankenstein for becoming channel members. If you want to be shouted out at the end of a video, and get other perks like the channel members here, then there is a link in the description down below to become a channel member. It greatly supports me, and it helps me immensely. With all of that out of the way, hope to see you all in the next episode of... What if Goku remembered the Saiyan?